And I'm Stuart Moore. It is a big day on our Space Coast. I'm reporting live this evening in Titusville as NASA is set to launch the most powerful rocket ever built, beginning NASA's long journey to return to the moon with the Artemis 1 mission. This afternoon, we will have live team coverage ahead of the launch window that will open just after 1 a.m. Just 30 minutes ago, crews began fueling the massive SLS rocket stack out at Kennedy Space Center. It's been a long journey to get to this point after several problems were discovered along the way. Now NASA says Artemis 1 is ready. Sue, go ahead and walk us through what NASA crews are focusing on for tonight. Summer and Jim, we are nine hours away, as you all said. 1 a.m., 104 is the official launch time for the window opening of the next attempt for the rocket launch, the SLS Artemis 1 mission. And I say next launch window because you at home know, just as we do here at West, this is the third time to try and get this mission finally off the ground. At the eight hour mark, as they also have already started to do, they've started to fuel more of the tanks of the core stage. They'll do some engine bleeds and other fueling, and that will be crucial. As you know, two of the scrubs were blamed on fuel leaks. It's those leaks that force the SLS a rocket back inside the vehicle assembly building for further repairs. Reminder, today's mission is all about learning more about this launch ahead of sending people on the next one and then landing on the moon on the third of the Artemis cycles. And while scientists know most around Central Florida hoped it would not be at one o'clock in the morning, their teams are prepared to gather knowledge about tonight's launch as it takes off. We have said we would prefer a daylight launch, but we've also said that we were OK with a nighttime launch. The daytime launch gives us more imagery, um, but the imagery we have on a nighttime launch uh, is sufficient for us to do the engineering assessments that we'll have to do uh, for the vehicle for future missions. Another big issue always across Central Florida is whether or not the weather will play a major role in this. I want to bring in more of our team coverage with first warning meteorologist Eric Burris. Eric, right now it's a bit overcast over here on the Cape. How are we looking for tonight and what's the most ideal conditions for a great successful launch? Sure. So, Stu, when you think about the weather, obviously the ideal condition would be a clear sky. Uh, during the course of today, as this deck of clouds moved in, the uh, launch weather officers went from a 90% chance of good weather for launch to an 80% chance of good weather. Still quite optimal, but the concern is what's called the thick cloud rule. Take a look over to 39B. Uh, we're over at the Kennedy Space Center uh, press mound, as it were, and uh, you can see we've got basically a front row seat, and all of those clouds are a, a subtle concern. What the meteorologists are going to be looking for is not only how thick they are, but at what level of the atmosphere, what temperature is the moisture particles in the atmosphere there, and of of course, how long does the rocket have until it hits that deck of clouds before escaping out, leaving the Earth's atmosphere, right? So all of these things are being calculated, but the good news is here we are just after 4 p.m. We have several hours to go for launch. Now, looking at data coming from weather stations over on 39B, breeze is running about 10 miles an hour, gusting to nearly 20 at the top of the rocket, which is well within constraints. We are looking for 35 to 45 mile per hour winds for uh, bad weather there. So all things considered, there are a few showers. The clouds were tracking, but all things are looking good weather wise for an on time departure. Let's hope that we see some history made. We're going to continue to monitor things and we'll bring in the data from the weather lab when I see you coming up just a little bit later on. But for now, that's the very latest from the Kennedy Space Center and first morning meteorologist Eric Burris. Stu, we'll send it back to you. OK, Eric, thanks so much. A lot of people are obviously excited about this launch, not just around Central Florida, but specifically here on the Space Coast, as it is expected to be a big boom for business this third time around. The president of the Titusville Area Chamber of Commerce says rocket launches like these gives a big shot in the arm for local businesses, and she is looking forward to boost it's going to give to the local economy. It brings a, a different demographic of people to town for these launches um, that we haven't seen since space shuttle days. All right, there are a lot of people that are already camped out waiting for this, trying to witness history. City officials are warning people to be patient in traffic. And a reminder, Jetty Park, which is a popular viewing spot, is currently closed because of damage from Hurricanes Ian and Nicole. Back out here live, guys. Uh, we are, of course, monitoring the latest situation with the Artemis 1 rocket. You can take a look at it right now. 104 a.m. is when the launch window officially opens. It's a two-hour window. We will keep you posted throughout this evening whether or not there are any more leaks or any issues that could possibly delay this mission once again, and of course, we'll have live team coverage throughout the night at 4, 5, 6, 10, and 11. And our Artemis special will be 1230 tonight, where we will go on air until the rocket takes off at 104 this evening.